yeah, thank you for the introduction. It's really an honor to be here, like next to all of these big names like Fair and Rayon, because I'll be honest, this presentation is about my first and only project with Rust. Anyways, my name is Jennings. I work at Boston Children's Hospital. My PI is Rudolph, and we are working on the CRISP project. At our lab within Boston Children's, we do neuroimaging research on developmental neurobiology. And specifically, the kind of research that I do is on fetal brain MRI. And what we do is we take MRIs of pregnant mothers. And as you can imagine, that introduces a lot of uh, problems and challenges we need to deal with numerically because of the biomechanics of that. And how we analyze this data is we pass it through open source pipelines, which are going to apply steps of image processing techniques, such as masking and certain bias corrections, and finally, reconstruction. And the end result is going to be some kind of processed image that is easier to quantify. For example, we can quantify parts of the brain's thickness or the parts of the brain's volume as well. In addition to actually doing the research, our lab also does cyber infrastructure development. And our goal here is to try to increase the productivity of research. And the key question that we're trying to ask is how can we bridge the divide between research application development and actually having these things be useful to clinicians when they're seeing patients by the bedside? because a lot of effort is being spent in developing these new applications and pipelines for doing image analysis, but not a lot of it is actually being used to inform medical decisions. Oh, God, I just realized I was not advancing my slides. Okay, um, sorry, I'll just backtrack a little bit. This is what a in utero fetal MRI looks like. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to quantify the development of certain regions of the brain. We can do that by passing these MRI images through image processing pipelines. And to coordinate all of this and to run our experiments at scale and make them accessible to clinicians, we are developing this cyber infrastructure called CRIS. As you can see, a lot of these scientific pipelines are organized in these directed acyclic graphs of compute flow. Uh, DAGs for short. What I'm developing is called CHRS or CHRS. I haven't decided yet. It's a Rust client for Chris, and it's made with a bunch of these famous crates, which I'll talk about a few of them in detail. So why Rust? Initially, I had a set of very naive requirements. I just wanted a single binary that people can download. And because our lab shares all of our data and programs on the NFS, I wanted just something that's blazingly fast to load. Uh, but actually, after my two weeks of being on the Rust bandwagon, I found out a bunch of benefits kind of just on the side of why Rust was ultimately the best programming language to choose. The most important of these two is that Rust has a really rich community of uh, third-party libraries in crates.io, and also the Rust compiler itself provides very strong static analysis that I haven't seen in any other programming language. One of these uh, third-party libraries is CLAP, which some of you guys may be familiar with. And CLAP is the command line argument parser for Rust. On the left, you can see what the code looks like using the derive API of CLAP. It is declarative. It implements the dry principle, meaning don't repeat yourself. And both your declaration of your arguments serves as your strongly typed um, interfaces as well. And on the right, you can see some of the cool features of CLAP, which is that it does um, color-coded output, and also it can do uh, typo correction as well. Something interesting that I came across in my experience with developing Rust, especially as a newbie in Rust, is that Rust actually becomes a lot more productive than people give it credit for. The common advice is that you should prototype your software in Python and then maybe develop it in Rust for production. Uh, one of the tasks that I've been working on is just data wrangling. Here we have a JSON representation of a resource in Chris called a pipeline. And 
I wanted to investigate more ergonomic and concise ways of expressing the pipeline. And this was made really easy with CERD and the from traits of the standard library in Rust. And it is because of these technologies in Rust, I was able to experiment with so many new ideas really fast and implement them in ways that were virtually bug free on my first try. Also something that has helped me been very productive in Rust is the new type pattern. New type pattern isn't unique to Rust, but what is unique to Rust is that the new type pattern is quote unquote zero cost. Um, for what the new type pattern is, is it allows you to be more specific about what a data type is. For example, a string can be literally anything, but I can narrow down the type of a string to something like a API URL or a specific API URL as well. And what that does is it allows the compiler to check for a lot of logical errors. And that's something that um, most other programming languages just aren't able to offer. Just for reference, here I have something that's not actually zero cost, but it's still rather efficient. Um, I have a validated new type. And this block of code that you see on the screen took me about 15 minutes to write, including the time it took me to read the documentation on how to implement a validator. My PI was actually using um, a Python version of the library that I'm trying to rewrite in Rust. And it took him four hours to debug the fact that he mistyped a URL. And so these are some of the advantages that Rust can provide in terms of getting things right the first time around. Chris itself is a web platform where there's a lot of failability um, and Rust makes this very ergonomic to work around with features from functional programming, which I won't talk about too much, but Basically, the point is what people refer to as idiomatic Rust is a way of writing Rust code that allows you to abstract a lot of the error checking and error handling out. So even without using the question mark syntax just by calling maps and unwrap ORs, I'm able to take away. Basically, this would be. Um, three times as long in Python. Each line of code you see here is abstracting away some kind of if then statement and some else statement to handle what if it's a null or what if it's an error. Um, the last part is there is still work to be done with improving Rust and the experience, especially for new users. This is something where I just typed out what I wanted to do and then Eventually, I was able to get to something that's working just by accepting the compiler's suggestions, but it's not pretty, and I have no idea what this means, to be honest. And yeah, the conclusion would just be Rust's golden rule is a very good guideline for how you can develop applications and be productive in doing so. Thank you.